Marisa, my name is Connie Schmidt, I'm a physician assistant student at the University of Detroit Mercy, here to do your cardiac exam. How are you today? Yeah, how are you? Good. I'm just going to put this over your lap. While I'm doing that, I'm going to wash my stethoscope and wash my hands and then do a general inspection. I'm looking for any signs of anxiety or distress, any signs of a diaphoresis, any cyanosis. I'm looking to see if, I, if she's exhibiting Levine sign and I'm also looking in her neck for any visible JVD. I'm going to expose your chest, okay, so I'm going to actually just move this to the side here so that I can see the entire precordium. After I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is palpate the chest. So I'm going to use the ulnar surface of my hand and I'm going to place it on the right sternal border, the left sternal border, the base of the heart, and the apex of the heart. And while I'm here, I'm also going to feel for any PMI. So right around in the midclavicular line, I'm going to place my fingers and see if I can feel the PMI. Um, I don't think I have to at this point because I have my fingers a little bit lower. Okay? All right, after I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is auscultate. So I'm going to listen to your heart. Correct? Oh, I forgot to look for listen heat. So sorry, I need to have someone's pen light. If I were to have a pen light in my hand, I would use tangential light. So I would be looking sideways. I'm sorry, I would actually have done this before I palpated the chest. So I'm looking for the signs of any visible lifts and heaves or for the PMI. Thank you. Now I'm going to listen to your heart, okay? I'm going to start up in the right second intercostal space so I can listen to the aortic area. So I'm going to test to make sure I'm listening to my diaphragm here. Then the left second intercostal space for pulmonic. Third for herbs. Can I ask you to set it, move your breasts? Thank you very much. Fourth intercostal space for tricuspid. And then I'm going to go right about in the midclavicular line here. I'm just going to move your fingers. Thank you very much. For the mitral. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to do the same thing. Listen to the other side of my stethoscope. Again, second intercostal space on the right. Aortic. And costal space on the left, harmonic, third, and can I ask you to move your breast? Thank you. Fourth, tricuspid, and then right about the midclavicular line, the fifth, of the mitral. Thank you. I'm going to move this table up here, and because she's young and healthy, I'm going to put it about 30 degrees. I'm going to have you scoot back here and move back on the table for me. take a look at your neck, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to listen for any venous hump. So I'm going to go right about here in the medial aspect of your clavicle, listen right above that, all right? And I'm listening for something that's continuous, louder in diastole, and I'm going to use the bell in my stethoscope to listen for that. If I were to hear something and I wasn't sure if it was coming from the jugular vein, I would try to occlude the vein, and that should stop the sound. Now I'm going to actually, and I could also repeat that on the opposite side. Listen again, the medial portion of the clavicle. Again, continuous. If I were to hear something, I could include the external jugular vein, and that should stop the sound. Tangential light for JVD. I'm also looking for the sign of JVD here, so I'm looking at the jugulars. I'm also looking at the carotids now on both sides. After I inspect, I'm going to palpate. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to palpate. The next thing I'm going to do with the carotids is I'm going to auscultate above and below the bifurcation using again the bell. one at a time, first on the left and then on the right. And then I'm going to palpate your, your carotids again, one at a time, feeling for contour and amplitude. And while I'm feeling the carotid, I'm going to time it with your heart by placing my fingers on the carotid and then at the PMI. And if I'm unable to palpate the PMI, then I would auscultate. 
So I'm going to listen at the same time that I palpate the carotid. Okay. Now I'm going to measure JBD. Yes. So I would use two, a straight edge and a ruler. Someone have a straight edge or a ruler that I can borrow? That's fine. Place it at the angle of Louis or at the sternal notch. <laughs> I'm going to look for where I can actually see the top of the uh, distension on the jugular vein, and then I'm going to measure it, go to the sternal angle, and measure across. Oh, this is not a good straight edge. I'll just use this from the top, go across to where I'm measuring, and it should be less than three to four centimeters. So right at the sternal notch, across from where I'm seeing the distension in the jugular vein, and measure and it should be less than three to four centimeters. Okay. At this time I'm going to lay you down completely, okay? I need you to sit up though because these tables necessitate that I have you sit up. Now can you lay flat for me? Connie, I need to have you sit around? She, she left. Home so she felt sick. She wasn't okay. feeling well. Okay. Alright, now that I have you laying on the table, I'm going to basically do the same thing I did while you were sitting up. So the first thing I'm going to do is use that pen light again, use some tangential light so I can look for the presence of lifts and heaves, and also to see if I can see the PMI. The next thing I'm going to do is palpate. And again, I'm going to use the ulnar surface of my hand, right sternal border, left sternal border. I'm feeling for thrills, base of the heart, and the apex. And again, while I'm here, I'm going to feel for the PMI two fingers right medial to the fifth midclavicular line and I can feel it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to listen to your heart again, okay? So I'm going to start up here in the right second intercostal space of the aortic. Again, I'm going to use my diaphragm first. Right second intercostal is aortic. Left second intercostal, pulmonic. The third is herbs. Can, can I ask you to move your breast to the side, please? Fourth tricuspid. I'm going to move just there. You go, perfect. Right about fifth midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space for the mitral. I'm going to ask you to just roll up on your left side there, please. And fix your. There you go. Lay down. Or Lay flat. Hmm? Thank you. Now right about where I felt the PMI, I'm going to go back and listen again while she's lying on the left side. First with the diaphragm. And I'm going to flip that around and listen with the bell. I'm going to have you lay back on your back and make sure that you're covered. And again, with my bell, second intercostal space right, aortic. Second intercostal space left, pulmonic. Third, herbs. And can I ask you to move your breast to the side, please? Fourth, tricuspid. <coughs> and fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, mitral. All right, thank you. Now we're going to take a look at your peripheral vascular system, okay? Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down here where your femoral arteries are. And I'm going to put this to the side here, keep you covered up. Go right about between the aces and where the pubic tubercle would be halfway. Again, using the belt of my stethoscope, I'm going to listen for the femoral artery. I'm going to cover you up. I'm going to go around to the other side here and do the same thing on this side. I'm keeping you covered, halfway between. Once I've auscultated, now I can palpate, and I'm going to feel right in that area. For the femoral artery, femoral artery, femorally. You have a lovely femoral artery. <laughs> and do the same thing on this side. Good. Now I'm going to feel the rest of your pulses, so I'm going to feel your brachials. I'm going to do that on both sides at the same time. And your radials. Have you bend your knees, put your feet flat on the table, please. Apoteal, one at a time. Switch out a little bit. Perfect. And then on the other side. Thank you. 
and the posterior tibialis. And then if you didn't have your Tootsie Socks on here, you can feel your dorsalis pedis. Okay, now I'm going to have you sit up for me. And we're going to test your capillary refill. So I'm going to do this down here on your toe. She has no toenail polish on, so I'm just going to pinch your toe, but I could also use the end of her toes too. Same thing with your fingers. Now she has nail polish up here, so I'm just going to use the end of her finger. And while I have you sitting up, I'm just looking for the sign of any muscle atrophy up here in your arms and your legs. I'm looking for the presence of hair down here on the legs, and then I'm going to feel the temperature with the backs of my hands to make sure she's nice and warm. Anything else? Just varicose veins? Pitting edema. Pitting edema? I have a lot of it. <laughs> no, you don't have any. <laughs> From the medial malleolus up, the tibia. Not pity. And I'm going to have you stand up for me real quick. And I'm going to look for the sign of any varicose veins. Let me have you put your gown, cover up your chest, please. Look at the backs of her legs. Okay. Good. Anything else? Anything? Blood pressure. Blood pressure.